Our next guest is a BYU grad who's making the world a more musical place. Uh, and music and sports go hand in hand. He's a teacher, a performer, an author, an executive, a saxophonist, a Cougar football fan. His bands, which age from 8 to 18 in age, have recorded with ACDC, which is my first question, but we'll get to that. Yeah, Rolling we're going to get to Stones, that. Neon Trees, which is full of BYU grads. The Killers, DJ Cascade, among many others. Our pleasure to welcome to the Wise Guys, the founder of Caleb Chapman Soundhouse and Grammy-nominated Crescent Super Band, Caleb Chapman. Hey, guys. Pretty Let's awesome. get his mic we up got there. his mic up. Okay, Thanks for DJ, being here. DJ says he's up and ready to yeah, go. I think we're rolling. There we go. Now, yeah. you kind of had to sit there with your fiance, Tommy, uh, while you watched the last 20 minutes of The Wise Guys. Loved it. Uh, did we get you up to date on everything <laughs> I, that was I, imper- I, I important? I feel like I'm all the way up to you speed You feel like on you know season. what's going on with, <laughs> with the Cougs right now, getting ready for football? We got a million questions for you, but let's start with the ACDC question. ACDC. I don't even care how loose the connection is between your company and ACDC, but let's talk about what that connection is. So uh, Chris Slade, uh, drummer for yeah. ACDC, great friend, come out, he's come out to Utah, worked with us many times, recorded with us, performed with the, with the kids and everything, and actually uh, taught at my camp a few years. So Thunderstruck. That, that's him? That's him. Oh, man. That's him. Was he uh, super cool? He's beyond cool. I, I'll tell you how cool he was. We, we were actually, uh, it was one of the years we were doing a camp. We were, we were out grabbing food. And this eight-year-old kid came in. No, he's probably younger than that. Maybe six-year-old kid came in with an ACDC T on. And, uh, and Chris Slade saw it, and he, he went over, and he said, I, I, I don't mean to interrupt your meal, he said, but uh, you're wearing my shirt. And the kid <laughs> <laughs> about died right there. And he, he spent a good 20 minutes hanging out with the kid, taking pictures. That's awesome. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Yeah, I, I don't know if, if you, you know this or not, um, but that is Dave's like ACDC oh, is his. When we oh, saw him in yeah, Vegas a few years back, uh, they were spectacular. He, it was when, like sitting when, in a Night of the Living Dead audience. We <laughs> got out was, of there pretty quick. When he was working at KLAS, um, you know, every year you'd get the box or the suite up above, which was a good thing because if you're down on the floor, even if you're not smoking weed, you're getting high. And now right here, Blaine's going to have a complaint here right now because I never invited him to come down. No, he actually did one time, and I was just like, no, I cannot partake of. <laughs> that is not true. I'm One, not, you'd be there in a second if you could have been. No, I would have been there. But uh, <laughs> about, what about there. the Rolling Stones? And these are Utah kids, a lot of Utah kids. But these are young musicians mixing it with the greatest band and their personnel in the history of music. What about, what about the Stones? Yeah, so with those guys, I mean, you know, their drummer, legendary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Please tell me you know his name. Watts. Yeah, thank you. Got it. Yeah, don't don't mess with him on, on rock. Yeah. So if you yeah. want to know who Snoop's Just drummer the classic is, I got rock. you. I don't know who Snoop's drummer is. <laughs> No, I mean he was a he was a uh, a, a consummate you know uh, not just musician but he 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 was an educator and actually a huge jazz fan and loved playing jazz really uh, which a lot of people don't know so you know that was my connection there but yeah again uh, really really gracious with the kids and I mean you know this Dave over the years I mean every the thing is about these kids at the Sound House and just with Utah in general you turn on any of the reality you know. Uh, talent shows whether it's singing or you know the the music or songwriting or any of that stuff man dancing utah is always represented yeah we are i think per capita the most talented state in the nation uh, hands down uh well with, you would know because these are a lot of these yeah. are your yeah. kids that come tell, tell us a little bit about about soundhouse so, so it's a musician performance training program right uh, and you're working with the kids they're, they're playing with professionals what what is this all about and there's huge talent here, as you've established. And so what are you doing to help hone that talent with these kids? Well, you know, I, and Dave and I were talking about this the other day. Um, you know, the way I approached music, when I, I studied music at BYU, I came mm-hmm. out here to Utah yeah. to, to study music. But, um, you know, the, the way we do it, I, I took what I learned at BYU and kind of uh, put my own spin on it and uh, really came up with a, a, a different approach to music. And a lot of the concepts that I use and that, that my team uses at the Soundhouse, we ripped off of sports. Like Coach K, like his books. I, I mean, those are like my Bibles. Yeah. And, um, and so really we took, I, I, I played all sports that had a ball growing up. Anything, yeah. Football, baseball, basketball, all of it. So you're like us. I am. Only you can play. I am like you Only guys. Only you have I'm a like God-given talent. But I'm not as cool. <laughs> yeah. But, no, you're, uh, cooler. you're cooler than us. <laughs> Anybody that plays a saxophone is just, it's got 
a lot of street cred is cool. Uh, but, uh, you know, so I took a lot of those concepts that I learned from playing team sports and brought those into the music. And so, um, you know, we've had massive success cranking out the top young musicians in the nation, yeah. literally. Uh, they're at the, the best music schools in the, in the world. And, and people are asking me, you know, like, what kind of ninja music stuff are you teaching? And it's actually it has nothing to do with music skills. What we're teaching them is uh, how to drive themselves, how to expect more of themselves, and really just asking these kids to do stuff that nobody else is asking them to do. And uh, setting the expectations, giving them a reason to work. And when you do that, when you believe in these kids, just like on a sports team, they deliver big time. So, so you're, you're basically saying to them, hey, if you want to be great, here we're going to teach you the tools to be great. Are you all in? And then you're same same thing we just, you know, had Clark Heyman on who's a who's a fighter pilot and has, has uh, done um, a bunch of flyovers but also has flown sorties over yeah. the Middle East and he talked about sports and how the same mentality applies about preparation and pushing yourself and and uh, being focused and being having exactness and all those things Sounds like that's exactly what you're doing with no, these kids and teaching them that. That's exactly it. And I love the all the words you just used are the exact words that, that I use, you know. Um, like our bar isn't like pretty good or really good. It's perfection. We shoot for perfection. And, um, and, and you know, another thing that I took from my sports experience that's very different from what I've seen done anywhere else, which I think is a big part of the success, and you guys, you guys will be able to relate to this, is, you know, when I initially started teaching music, I did it like I'd seen it, which is I'm the teacher, you're the students, I'm the coach, you know, you're the kids, you know, you do what I say. Yeah. And that's not a really effective model. And I thought back to like all the sports that I did and the, the best teams I was on, you know why they were the best? It's because we had a good coach, but more importantly, there was peer pressure within that group. It was the guys on the team pushing you to be awesome. It wasn't the coach standing there and yelling in your face. It was your buddies going, you better not let us down. You know, like yeah. I'm here sweating, putting the work in, you need to carry your weight too. And so we take that same thing on to the bandstand, you know? And so it's the musicians putting pressure on the other musicians. Like, we're going to be incredible. We're going to be amazing. And we're going to bring it 100%. When you get that, t that team, uh, that peer pressure of their, of their colleagues, that delivers results like you can't get by, you know, screaming in a kid's face. Caleb Chapman's on the Wise Guys tonight. We're talking about music and sports. Your sound house is headquartered in American Fork. How many bands do you have in there, uh, genres that you're teaching? And, and how does a kid get, do they just knock on the door and say, I'd like to come in, or do you recruit them? How do they sign up? Yeah, so we have over 20 bands. Every band's a different style. 20 bands? Oh, yeah. This year we'll probably be fielding close to 25. Wow. So 300 kids. Um, every group is a different style of contemporary music. So we have everything from, uh, you know, obviously alternative uh, modern rock, ska, reggae, funk, R&B, Motown. I think there's some opera Latin. in there. Yeah. <laughs> no opera. <laughs> no yet. opera no, yet. See, Marie, We're kind of going with a little Marie more Marie told us that she just decided to teach herself opera. Yeah. And then she launched an opera album, and it went to number one. So yeah. you got opera to add, but you got everything else. We got everything else. I, I, just, I, li I heard, like, my music now, not just yours. What? I heard funk and R&B and... Yeah, <laughs> I, I grew up. I grew up in New York playing sports, so those were my genres. Well, there right? you go. So yeah. yeah, so you know, and there's not a lot of opportunities if if you're a kid that wants to dig into R and B. Where where are you going to do that? You know. So uh, basically, you know, I'm I'm still a kid in inside here, and we built Soundhouse to be like what I wish I had access to. You know, growing up in Boston. Now I've been to the Soundhouse. I've seen you work, and um, and and you're unique in a way because. You, you got the students playing, and, and if you've ever seen Caleb's band, and they've been all over the place, you'll know that, that you're jumping around like a linebacker that just sacked the quarterback the whole time, and it's like, it's entertainment. I'm watching the band, I'm watching you, I'm listening to the music, and I'm going, that is one band instructor who is into his work. Well, yeah. I mean, I, look, I got the best seat in the house. <laughs> These kids are absolutely amazing. I mean, world class. Like we, they're geniuses, right? They are geniuses, and they're they are fully pro. Like we, you know, just last weekend we were in Telluride on the main stage of the big festival there, and That's um, awesome. yeah, and they're playing for thousands of people, you know, and uh, and they can absolutely completely hang at the highest level. I mean, that's why all these guys come in from Journey and ACDC and Toto and the Killers and all that. It's yeah. because these kids can play at their level, 
you know, and and that's that that pretty is awesome. that's incredible. I I need to come out and see it. Okay, so people when they think of music schools, I immediately think of School of Rock. Right, right. So similar, dissimilar, any any ties? He's to got that a little Jack all? Black in. You have a little Jack Black in any tie at all to how, what we saw in School of Rock? So it's it's kind of a similar thing. You know, School of Rock is a is a global franchise at this point. They've got you know hundreds of locations, and and School of Rock is a great organization. We we actually work with them, and um, they they really here in Utah have become our feeder. So like the kids that are are a little bit more serious about music end up coming over and, and working with us after a few years there. So School of Rock is a great place for kids kind of like get their feet wet and and you know just kind of jam out a little bit. Soundhouse is for these kids that are like. They're ready to do Tr- it. Truly gifted. Tour, and, record, you know, and, hang and with the rock stars. So, so what's the long term for these kids that come to the program? Because some of them come in to you pretty young, right, yeah. into the program. Yeah. They're, they're, they're prodigies. They're geniuses. And uh, and then and then what's the pathway? What's the long term for these kids that come through the program? Well, Blaine, i got to back you up for just one second because what you said, a lot of people assume when they see these bands that these kids are all geniuses coming in. Now, I'll tell you, they are geniuses, but... 95% of them don't start that way. 95% of them start as just normal, average kids who've got an interest in like and, playing great and, music. And then you find the prodigy in them or the, or we, the genius in them. We give them a reason to become geniuses. I love that. Yeah. So here's a question that all parents want you to answer and they hope their kids are listening. Um, how have you seen music transform young minds to where they their self-confidence, their self-awareness, and their overall intellect is increased as they learn to play something. Well, I mean, it's a no-brainer. We all know that music makes kids smarter, right? But and, and, and I think, you know, to go back real quick to answer that question, I want to go back to Blaine's question just a second ago, which is what's the end goal? A lot of people think since these kids are performing at such a high level, the end goal is to create an army of professional musicians. That's not it. The end goal is to create an army of incredibly successful humans and there's mm-hmm. nothing you know better than music as a vehicle to do that that's why we do what we do because these kids come out of this with incredible confidence uh the ability you know to to be creative problem solve teamwork all of that stuff and the proof is in the pudding we've been this is our 25th year of sound house and in those 25 years every single kid thousands of kids have not just graduated high school Thousands of kids, every single one has gotten college scholarship offers. Wow. Every single kid. So, so, hey, so uh, w- one of our, uh, this is like a hangout, so people ask yeah, us whatever yeah, they yeah, want. Yeah. They want to know if Dave and, or I play any instruments. So I'm going to let yeah. Dave go first. Do you play any instruments, Dave? Uh, I only sing duets with Maria Osmond. Yeah, he did sing on stage with Maria at the same uh, uh, Yeah, I Caleb saw suffered. it. And you know what he tweeted? I, he tweeted, I. I don't have the words. I think was. So, yeah, so I think that I'm was speechless. the truth. So, that, so that Dave, can mean all kinds of Dave plays the radio. <laughs> Just no couldn't words. find the words. I, no words. I play piano, guitar, and drums. So I play three instruments. Yeah. And I grew up in a musical family. I'm in a weir- I'm from a weird family that where the arts and sports were equally important. And I have a daughter that's a Broadway star and went through the MDT program at BYU. Um, both of all of our kids are are musical, um, and they're all athletic. And those two things. As you mentioned, Caleb, those two disciplines really go together. I think they do. Um, I, I, you'll love this. So my our one that's on Broadway, um, a dance. I'm not going to name names, but a dance, a ballet program, um, said to her, "You need to come here all the time, or we're going to kick you out." <laughs> and she, because you can't keep leaving to go to track. And she said, well, then you can kick me out because I'm going to track, right? right? Yeah. So she goes to track. She finds another studio. I'll mention this one, Love to Dance. And they said, listen, we'll find you some ballet. We'll bring a, an instructor down from the University of Utah once a week so you get your ballet. Come dance with us and go run track and go do the things you want to do. So she runs in the state championships in, in the 100-meter hurdles uh, all through high school, a big-time recruit for high school track programs. But, but they let her use these disciplines to – to do both, to do music and. And so I kind of want to go back to that dance studio, I'm not naming names again, and say, she's one of the best dancers in the world now. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, it's and, like and, a football. And, and, the, and the people that really raised her up and gave her confidence are the ones that said, go excel in everything. Right. right. Yep. Go do everything. We see it all the time with football coaches going, uh, if you're on the football team, you can't play baseball. Right. You can't play basketball. And college coaches today are saying, they want to recruit kids that play everything. Right. Because it makes them a, a well-known. Yep. Now, in defense of my mother, who had 10 of us, 
<laughs> she tells us that uh, due to our lack of music, uh, musical intellect, she said, I had to make a choice. I had to make a choice. Do I force my three boys to learn the piano and become an alcoholic, or do I let them do what they want <laughs> and live a life free of alcohol? And she chose the word of wisdom. That's, there you go. <laughs> so, I, hey, you know, the, so we can't I play the it. piano. Hey, who, <laughs> is it? it Mike is just me. One of our, says, hey, I grew up playing violin, trumpet, French horn, and tuba. Man, those don't seem to go together to me. Those don't, no. Those that, don't, that's yeah. a great eclectic group of instruments yeah. to play. Way to go, Mike. Now, before you play for us here in just a second, and you've played the national anthem for the jazz and, and the Nuggets and the Wizards and the Celtics and the Heat and, and all that, See, which that's is all super the spo- cool. All the sports and music all come together at some <laughs> point. But right? finish this question. Finish this sentence, not yeah. a question. The power of music is the power of music is unmeasurable i I, it just it like music it it think think of how many things that we have in life that can uh you know that that are better than language that are that cross uh uh borders of of culture and race and 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 geography and language and and uh, you know social status. Music is is that. I mean, the, everybody can enjoy music, and and there are and you know music is a communication tool that is so much more powerful than words. When when we're in love with somebody, what do you do? You, like we you, have a you, song. Don't you, we all have a you song? You have a song. Hey, what's what's your? You what's don't your, have a poem. What's your song? What's your guy's? Yeah, song? You, nobody what's, says. You hey, what's, song your, what's, your, what's your guy's poem or what's your guy's favorite quote? No, we have a, a song. Tommy, right? what's your song? <laughs> Wait, you guys need to find a They're song. They're still thinking you're about ma- their song. Yeah, you're marrying a musician. We're, we're, we're narrowing it down. So, hey, yeah. question. Uh, how can I get my first grade son interested in music? Yeah. That's well, Chaplain Brett. Yeah, Chaplain Brett Peterson's asking that, one of our one of our uh, hangouts with us here. Well, the way to get them interested is to connect them with, with music that they're interested in. You know, I, I think, and this is my soapbox with music education, is that um, for hundreds of years... Uh, we've been, well, I mean, thousands of years. The, the way that music has been taught through the ages uh, was with folk music of the day. So folk music of the day a thousand years ago was very different from folk music today. But this problem that we've got in music education is that we are still teaching music to kids with folk music from hundreds of years ago. We need to be teaching kids with folk music of today. What's today's folk music? Today's folk music is is Bruno Mars and Justin Timberlake mm-hmm. and Beyonce. Coldplay. Coldplay. Yeah. Go sign up for school music and see how many of those schools are playing music by those groups. The problem is they're still playing marches that are hundreds of years old that parents aren't interested in, kids aren't interested in. It's really tough. Now, does that music have value? Absolutely. I mean, I am the biggest classical music fan. As a matter of fact, what I wanted to do for a career was direct symphony orchestras. That's what I studied in high school. I wanted to direct the Utah Symphony. But, uh, you know, I ended up doing other things. But the thing is, I'm passionate about classical music. I'm passionate about jazz and art music. But if we want to preserve those... We need to get more kids involved with music, more first graders playing music. And the way we do that is by getting kids playing the music they're listening to, you know? Yep. So we need a big change, a, a massive uh, shift in music education. Let me tell you a story, a quick story that goes with what you just said a moment ago that brought it to my memory. Uh, and it was at the Olympics over in Sochi. And of course, music, the Olympics aren't the Olympics and unless the Olympic right. music comes on right. and sets the tone for for, for all of that stuff. But we, uh, we'd been over there for about two weeks and we went into Sochi to go to a branch on Sunday, a church branch there. And, um, and we finally got there and our whole world is surrounded by Russian, Russian, everything. We had an interpreter just to get through the city to get where we're going. And we go up there into the chapel and everyone's speaking Russian. Um, and I sat there and I thought, okay, what's this going to be like until the organ started to play? And it dawned on me that, uh, that the music is not bound by the language. And, and all of a sudden, in the middle of forever away from my home, I knew the words to the song we were about to sing, and it, just was, it was just kind of a, an aha moment of, hey, wait a second, what the song that that organ's playing is the same for everyone. That's right. That's exactly right. Music is the universal language, right? Yeah. And I sang so, in English, and everyone hey, else sang hey, in Russian. Fortunately, I had no idea what I was when, singing. When I, when I think <laughs> about sports and music, like I go to a Major League Baseball game, and every player picks a walk-up song. 
mm-hmm. that represents who they are. And now I was just I was just down St. George this weekend for my grandson's birthday, and he says, "Hey, Pop, do you know what my walk-up song is?" On his little league team, they all have a they all have a they all have a walk-up song. I mean, music is part of the fabric of our lives. It's 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 pretty cool, and it and sports and music are integrated in a big way. What's your walk-up song? If you had, if you were walking up to the plate, what would be your walk-up? Song? Or if you're coming out in the stadium, what's the song that represents you? Man, I've got to think about that for a second. Uh, uh, see, maybe back like in black. On the spot. Back in black. Back yeah, in black. I, I like put Dave or, on the spot or all the, time. the intro of Highway to Hell before they, you know, there the you words go. come up where it's just. Said, <laughs> da, na, na, what, what's your da, What's your da, walk up song, Caleb? What's yours? You know, back in black. I got to be honest. And back in black got me in trouble on the David Letterman show. <laughs> um, what happened? Uh, it was sad. Uh, he was interviewing Letterman. Was interviewing Kiefer Sutherland. I was in the audience, uh, <laughs> guest of my friend Tom Malone, yeah. uh, who's in the band there. And uh, I thought I had muted my phone, and of course my ringtone was oh, back in black. Oh, it was back in black. And it was during Letterman, full volume. Oh no! <laughs> in the middle of the interview, yeah, security almost threw me out because yeah, they're doing the interview and. Dang. You got a David Letterman yeah, moment. That, that's yeah, awesome. That, that, uh, that one takes us back to our youth. Start me up's another good one. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like that. The, I, I think what was yours? My, mine's cha- well, I've changed now, but mine now, I think, if I was walking up, I would run to play "My House" by Flo Rida. Oh yeah, yeah, and and I the 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 guy that wrote, Ross Golan wrote um, "My House." And he and his wife were were, and he told us the story. Do you have you ever met Ross? No, I've never great, met Ross. Great, great but I know, songwriter. I know about him. Yeah. yeah so, so, um, and Ross represents songwriters all over. Yeah. With, yeah. So, so Ross was telling us he and his wife were sitting home on a Sunday night, and they're like, "Hey, let's let's write a song." And they were thinking they've written some stuff for Adele, so they thought, "Well, you know, let's let's write a song for Adele. Let's write a ballad." And you know how we just like to hang out on a Sunday night? Let's write a, a song about hanging out on a Sunday night at our house. And they start doing it like, ah, oh, this just isn't working. What if we, what if we upbeat it a little bit? Let's speed it up a little bit. What? And they started to do all these little things to it. And then they both looked at each other and went, flow. <laughs> and, and it, so they go from writing an Adele song to they, they think this is good for Flow Rider. They've written some things for him. So the, they record a little thing, a little demo, and they call him on the phone. And they play it for him on the phone. And, and Flow Rider goes, that's a number one hit. I want it. Right. I want to record it. And he records it. So my house was actually a song that Ross Golan started to write that he thought they were writing for maybe for Adele, and yeah. it ends up being that's how music is, right? Yeah. But I love it because I'm walking up and it's like, "Welcome to my house!" Like this is my house. Uh-huh. So I think that would be my walk up right You're now with my, my flow rider. Yeah. Now, well, I, you asked how powerful music was. Yeah. I got to tell you, for me, how powerful it was. You know, I love BYU football. I love Cougar Stadium. I love playing football, but I did get to play. In Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Oh. But it was on my instrument, you know? Not at Stadium of Fire. At Stadium of Fire, yeah. yeah opening, and you uh, rocked the place. We, uh, it was just a few people in the crowd, 40,000 people. Just a few. So cool. Opening yeah. for a little band, Journey. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was an so, awesome night. So, <laughs> what yeah, a music, night. I would say music's pretty powerful. <laughs> it is. It's Got unbelievable. Me in the Cougar it's Stadium. unbelievable. For the powerful. first time ever in the history of the Wise Guys, we're going to have some live music. Right now, you ready wow. for rise and shout? Rise and shout I on the saxophone. You, this is a wait, this guy. My, hey, I question though: Are you playing injured right now? I, I am. <laughs> I, Dave reminded me of my mom today because <laughs> I wasn't. So once, so you know, I played sports all growing up, uh, all through elementary, junior high, got to high school, and you know, you kind of, if you're serious about sports or music, you kind of got to pick one, you right? Know? right. And, uh, and so I, I was my best. I, my best sport was baseball. I was a great pitcher, and. Um, and I, I was thinking I, that's the route I was going to go. I was going to drop music, do baseball, and uh, hope for a scholarship. I had a buddy that was a pitcher that was older than me, went to college on scholarship. And while I was a freshman, he was a freshman in college, threw out his arm his freshman year, no more scholarship. Oh. And so that was enough for me to go, uh, I'm going to stick with music instead of baseball. So, um, so music was my focus. That's how I was going to pay for everything. And uh, my, my mom completely... Uh, forbade me from playing basketball <laughs> at that point. Uh, yeah, for the jam can't players. hurt. Can't now hurt. wait a second before can't you hurt. compare so, me I, to your good mother. No, yeah, you sounded exactly like you, I got my yeah, mom but again. Years here. late. You're not a teenager when uh, I sent you that text. Yeah, well, well, you're a grown man engaged. What did he say to you in the text? Well, he told me I'm not allowed to play basketball if I'm going to play the saxophone. He's he's said, a, I have to get got, my priorities. I'll tell you exactly what I said. He's got to do what he loves to do. I'll tell you exactly what I said. He goes, "Hey, I totally jammed my finger playing hoops today, and it kills." Like a mother, speaking of mother, uh, so you'll get the fight song, but probably not anything else. And then I said, there comes a moment in time when we need to put the basketball down and focus <laughs> exactly on the like more important he, things. Sometimes he's way too, like, 
What is he? I'm like, what are you, 80? Uh, I are said, you 80 years old? What's going on? I said, we'll Jeez. take the rise and shout and then tell Tommy she's always welcome to come to the show whether you come yeah, or not. I told her that. I, I like, everybody's throwing, all of our followers are throwing out their walk-up songs. And I like that one of our guys, uh, uh, Bluesville, says everyone needs a walk-out-the-door song in the morning. Right? <laughs> My walk-out-the-door song in the morning is Nappy Roots, Good Day. Good day. Good day. Gotta have yeah, a good, good day. All my, that, all my homies gonna. But anyhow, the, the, so they're they're putting those in there. I think Beethoven uh, would be cool to walk up to Beethoven's, Beethoven's fifth. fifth. <laughs> a walk up to the, <laughs> and that's what Chaplin. Of course, Chaplin Brett Peterson. Everybody's happy there. song is the fight song because that meant someone just scored a yes, touchdown. That's right. But I want to point out. So you're. I shouldn't have said you're injured because there's a sports saying that you can play hurt, but injured is a different. Like if you're injured. Then you shouldn't play. You got to yeah. heal up. He's if not injured. No, if you're I'm just hurt, he's just dinged up. You got to play yeah, hurt. It just doesn't bend all you the gotta, way. You got to play hurt. So, <laughs> but fortunately, you so, don't need your fingers to play so the Caleb, saxophone. No. Caleb's just hurt. He's not injured. He's hurt, but he's gonna play right. hurt. He's, now, now, I I did graduate from BYU. Right. I have never in my life played the fight song on saxophone. Not well, once. remember what? a couple weeks ago no. when I said, "Hey, can you play the fight song?" I know you did. I knew you would go find out how to play it. People get mad at us because. We're broadcasting a game, and they play the fight song, but we got to stay broadcasting the game. We're on the mic. We're sitting down at the table, and people are like, how come you don't stand up during the fight song? Because <laughs> we're announcing. I'm like, I'm, the other I'm team announcing isn't cheering the game. For this song. I'm like, come on. Give me a little break. <laughs> okay, so was this a hard song to learn on the saxophone? Uh, I got to be honest. I haven't spent a ton of time learning it. But so we're winging it? Is that what we're going to well, do? You know what? Slightly winging it. If anybody it. Okay. can wing it. This is the guy. Ho- hopefully, hopefully is. we got. I it, mean, yeah. of all the nice things we've said, so do, do just leading up to this and, point, and we, yeah, and I'm gonna stand up because. All right. Okay, this is Caleb Chapman. By the way, he's a. Uh, I, is I, am I, I saying well, this right? You're a clinical you know, I, saxophonist. I like, I've got albums out on iTunes. Instead of playing my albums, we are having me play the fights. Yeah, where, where do you want the mic? Down by the. Yeah, it's gonna be down here. Okay. Just, hey, just for the example, just for. You could have played some of those songs had you not played basketball this morning. So we're happy with the fight song. You're supposed to play my album off the internet. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, that's true. And people, we'll we're going to tell them where to go. We're okay, going to tell them where to go. All right, for the first time ever, live Sometimes music on the Wise Guys. Go. World famous uh, Caleb Chapman, minus his Crescent Super Band. They're not good. <laughs> <that. laughs> Too. I, was, oh, was was side a, stuff. I like the little runs. That, like that, that was sweet. That was sweet. All right, he's gonna get his headset on. We got five quick questions for you, but before All we right. get to that, tell us where you're doing right now. I know you've been working with David Osmond, and he's been working with you and your band. Yeah. And then uh, you're getting married on October first. So let's first start with what you're up to, and then we're gonna talk about getting married. Well, look at that. I mean, I mean, I got to work with David Osmond recently, who mm-hmm. sings with Marie. Yeah, and I got to work with. Dave McCann, it's who all also coming. sings yes, with Marie. Yes, he sings with Marie at the Sarah oh my gosh, It's, it's almost is, in stereo. Oh, this is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> okay, don't get so, him going or he's going to start singing all and you the time. And you got some gigs coming up. We got some gigs coming up. Yeah, I mean, uh, man, there's all kinds of stuff going on. But a big one with, uh, with, my, with Dave, uh, with the Osmond Chapman Orchestra. Um, we've got a big uh, cruise coming up in January with the Piano Guys that's open. Oh, that sounds oh, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. fantastic. We saw John Schmidt last night at the yeah. show. Fantastic. Oh, man, John's, John's great. And uh, um, so that's going to be through the Mexican Riviera in January. So you, need nice. to, you guys need to hop on that one. Yeah, way to schedule it right in the middle of basketball season. <laughs> hey, uh, Dave, where, where's that text? You know, sometimes yeah. it comes, <laughs> we need to set our priorities and make decisions yeah. about what's really oh my gosh. Speaking of priorities and decisions, uh, congratulations on the wedding coming up. Yes. Thank you. Best decision of my life. We're so. excited about it. I know you're excited about I'm it. I'm very excited. And I'm what's, glad what's, Tommy's excited what's about the, it. What's the date? October 1st, October right? October 1st. Okay, and everybody's invited that's out there. <laughs> everybody's invited. It'll just be finger foods, but uh, I think that that's awesome. Um, and it just it just fills in the, it just gives you balance, doesn't it? 
It does. Yeah. It just gives you balance. Especially, I, I mean, of all people, I need it. So uh, <laughs> Tommy will attest to that. That is true. You ready for five questions? I'm ready for five we'll questions. Get you out of and here. by the way, BYU Sports Addict says, okay, that song on the sax was just plain old freaking awesome. <laughs> so I, lo- I love you. it. So here's your five questions. That was great. Right. We'll have it on our podcast, too, yep. and we'll push it out to YouTube yep. so everyone yep. can hear it. Favorite sports movie? Favorite sports movie? Uh, remember the Titans. Okay, right. now Denzel you're Washington. the first one that's been on our show that has the same one as me. What? Yeah. Are you kidding? That's Are mine. Remember the Titans. Maurice was Hoosiers when she came right out. She Without hesitation. No hesitation. Hoosiers. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, she's married to a basketball player. <laughs> that's true. So, favorite band or singer? Uh, the Police. Why? The police. Uh, just because, th- I mean, three musicians that were all some of the greatest ever, and and they made, with just three people and three instruments, they made bigger, thicker music than bands with 10 guys on the stage. Uh, completely changed the face of rock and roll, um, and just incredibly inventive, and just, I love every single tune who, that band right. created. Who, who did Roxanne? Police. police. Okay. That's the that's the one of the big numbers in Moulin Rouge that my daughter's yeah. in right now, and they're performing it. She's doing it on uh, um, James Corden show on Thursday night. Oh, nice! On the I'll have to show. tune in. Yeah, so yeah. everybody watch that. Rock Classic Sand, the rocks police. a gray area for Blaine. Yeah, <laughs> I just had to help so him anyhow, uh, favorite breakfast cereal. Favorite breakfast cereal. Uh, that one's easy. It's peanut butter Captain Crunch. See, Dave. Interesting. Like he, I'm that down. he just said. The, I thought he, these questions were hard. He said Captain Crunch. I'm like, these aren't no, hard no, no, questions. Like, They're and, just and, five and questions. And we were all like, oh, he, yeah. he says Captain Crunch. We're like, and I don't need like, peanut butter in like, there. Is it, is if it I the want peanut, peanut butter, butter I'll, I'll have it, a sandwich for is lunch. Is it Crunch Berries? <laughs> and he's just like, no, regular Captain Crunch. We're going. Oh, that is so lame. I did this Peanut morning. butter crunch with peanut the Smedley, the the elephant. Yeah, that's those of us. You got it. Favorite arena or venue that you've performed in? And that could be international. Yeah. And the, your favorite well, venue no, ever? E- easy, uh, Carnegie Hall. Okay. Had my, we had cool. our, our own night headlining. I mean, oh, how I cool. had my name on Carnegie Hall. Like that was like I didn't think I'd ever get there. And I, s- I cool. sat in the um, the center box on, in the, on that mezzanine level in Carnegie Hall with Steve Young mm-hmm. um, to watch Libby perform the prayer with uh, Dallin Vale Bales. Oh yeah, I worked with Dallin. Yeah, he's so, awesome. Incredible talent. Not Carnegie Hall guy, right? What's that? Carnegie Hall. Carnegie, yeah. Carnegie and, and, Hall. And here was what was cool about it. I picked this up because I, I didn't have much interest, interest in saxophone at all. And um, I got the sax mainly because it got me out of a, like a, a workshop at school or something like that. I wasn't interested. My mom knew I wasn't. So she went to the record store, said, give me the album of the coolest sax player there is. And they sold her a David Sanborn album. Oh, yeah. She brought it home. I listened to that. And I was like, I got to play the saxophone. So my show at Carnegie Hall was me at Carnegie Hall with special guest David Sanborn. Oh, so now I got that to is perform a, with do, David Sanborn. What other instruments do you play? I mean, I make noise on everything, but this is the only one. That's I your that's for. your baby right there. <laughs> yeah. You played Carnegie right Hall and the Wise Guys. Let's let's that's include right. that so, in the same so, sentence. So now, so now we've we've talked about your favorite arena or venue that you've played. What's the what's your favorite concert you've ever been to that you're not playing in? Oh. Oh, man, I have been to a lot of concerts. Favorite concert that I've been to. Yeah. Is it because of the venue or the band? The band. The band. Okay, so here's the thing. This was not my favorite band, but it was my the most impactful concert I've ever been to was Paul McCartney oh. at Energy Solutions or whatever it was named at that time. I mean, right. who remembers what, what it was? But I'll tell you what. He had this huge band, and I, I just went because I just wanted to see a Beatle. I'd mm-hmm. never seen a Beatle in concert. <laughs> so I just bought the tickets, and I went. I wasn't expecting anything. You know, we all know all the tunes, but eh, I, I was just... And, and so the show was great, and I, I like really was enjoying it. And then he dismissed his band, and uh, it was just him on stage with an acoustic guitar oh, wow. playing Blackbird. And it was about halfway through the tune, and I just I felt like something on my face, and I'm like... What? What is that? I'm not and crying. I, you're crying. It was, it was beyond crying. It was gigantic crocodile tears. Wow. During Blackbird. During Blackbird. And I was like, what is going on? Like, it hit me, like, Bam. all the way. In your heart. All the way in. All, like, n- no music has ever done that to me before. And wow. I work in music. So that, that uh, left a mark on me forever. So All right. That's cool. pretty cool. That's a good one. That's pretty you amazing. Know, uh, speaking of Paul McCartney, I... Marie told a story oh, last week. Gosh, I can't believe this story. And, and we were talking, I don't know how it came up, but she said uh, when they were young and they were over there uh, performing somewhere, 
McCartney came to their hotel, Paul did, to get their autographs for his daughter. Oh, <laughs> How about that? It's when the, when the Osmonds the and the Jacksons the were, Osmonds. You know, were the two biggest bands okay, in the okay. world at the time. Do we have time for one quick story? Sure. Yes, okay. of course. So I'm, I'm great friends with uh, David Page of Toto. He's yeah. the one that wrote Africa, sang oh. it, plays piano in Toto. And, um, and, and he was, so Toto was the studio band for Thriller. For Michael Jackson, you know? Oh, wow. And so, anyways, so he's got this in- incredible recording studio at his house, and he's lived there forever. And so all these famous people have come there to record and hang out. So he's telling me this story. He's like, oh, Caleb, I just remember this story. You're never going to believe who came to my house. And I was like, well, I'm, I bet I would, but who? You know, <laughs> like everybody, right? He said, yeah, I'm sitting there one day, and, uh, it's, and this was, you know, in the heyday of Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. You know? He said, I'm, I'm sitting there at my house and this limo pulls up unannounced. And I was like, to your house? He's like, yeah, to the studio. And Michael Jackson gets out. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That's incredible. He's like, no, 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 that's not the story. He's like, that's not the cool part. He said, Michael Jackson gets out and opens the door and you're never going to believe who was at my house. And I was like, who? He's like, Donnie Osmond oh. came to my house. <laughs> and I'm like, Michael and Donnie wait, wait, wait. out. Michael's the crap part of the story, and Donnie is the one that That's blew you away. You know? Awesome. So, That's awesome. That is cool. I, I want to ask one sixth question. The, you're the favorite musician that you've ever played with, that you've ever jammed with. Well, I mean, just, I mean... It's probably got to be David Sanborn just because oh, that's, the that's, whole, that's the instrument. That's the instrument. That's your reason. heart right there. But, um, but, you know, I mean, probably like right next to that, it, 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 he's become a great friend and we've done tons of stuff together is Steve Smith from Journey, the drummer yes. from Journey. Just because, I mean, he's not just, he wasn't just a great drummer in the time or a great drummer of everybody living. Like he is literally like one of probably the top five greatest drummers of all time in history. And, uh, and, and, and I, and I just have a thing for drummers. I just am blown away by him. And so, uh, he's great. Yeah. Our friend, governor Gary Herbert, who was on this show a few weeks ago, presented you with the governor's performing artists award for your significant contributions to art in Utah. And that was in 2013. It's been full steam ahead True professional, great ambassador of BYU and music, friend. We're so grateful to have you here on our show, and we're, we'll see you at the wedding. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks Octo- October 1st. October The 1st. great uh, Caleb Chapman. Oh, wait, before you go, uh, give us your website so folks know exactly where they yep. can listen to all your music. <laughs> or, or, or if they want to find, out about, find your, out about getting their, their kids involved in the program. Right. So Osmond Chapman. Uh, orchestra, my new my new group with David Osman. Uh, of course, that music's on all streaming platforms, yeah. Apple, Spotify, all that. Um, as far as getting involved with the Sound House, uh, we start musicians at eight years old, uh, up through the, you know high school graduation, up through eighteen. You can get information on all of that at ccsoundhouse.com. Awesome. So we got osmondchapman.com up on the stream, and then we've and then we'll got the www.ccsoundhouse.com also on the stream, so folks know. Um, awesome. All right. Will you, uh, will you come back? Uh, Any time. And when anytime. you're not, when you're not hurt, we want you back. <laughs> yeah. Maybe may, play maybe, you some of your real stuff. Yeah. I can bring the guitar in. We, we can, can jam. jam. Let's oh, do it. And I'll sing. That's it. If no. you, that's the three. Can we please that, limit this? Can see, we limit this? See, Dave, Dave wouldn't, wouldn't have appreciated this, but see, you should have been at our album release party last year. Cause you know who was on it. We played at the Rose Bowl, Osmond Chapman. Yeah. And it was a joint bill with a band called Earth, Wind and Fire. Oh so. man. See, Classic. Dave's not into that stuff. But I, but yeah. I, uh, but I still know their song. <laughs> What's your favorite Earth, Wind and Fire song? Uh, well, I just love all ah, of them. He doesn't know. I just know. love all of them. He doesn't know. Yeah, but, I, but you can pick him right up. All right, you're done. Get out. Get out. You've you exhausted our... Tommy, we'll see you at the wedding. Congratulations. Tommy, congratulations. The great Caleb Chapman. Thank Thanks you so, so much. Thanks so much, Caleb. Appreciate love it. that. Absolutely love it.